Hello everyone, my name is George Diaz, president and founder of Larry Jacob Internet Marketing, and I'm bringing you another episode of Transforming Small Business Thinking. Uh, this week I have the pleasure of um, hosting a program with Josh Nelson. Josh, how are you? Fantastic, glad to be here. Now, Josh is someone, interesting enough, we both live in Miami, but we met in Arizona and Phoenix for the first time. Uh, our paths were kind of crossing in different ways, and uh, we're, we're both in the Infusionsoft space, and, and over time he's become a client, he's a current client, um, and then he was also my coach in a program that uh, we might reference as part of this call, so uh, you know we kind of go back a ways. So Josh, why don't you introduce yourself, and what we're going to be talking about is you know, we're all business owners here. I mean, I'm assuming if you're listening, that's what you're about. And how was it that you went from what you do before you went online and started promoting yourself online? And, and what was that learning experimentation process? So that's kind of what we're talking about today. So Josh, why don't you kind of just introduce yourself and, and let's get started with that. Okay, great. So like I said, my name is Josh Nelson. I run a, a company called Plumbing and HVAC SEO. So if I kind of look up a little bit, there's my there's my company branding. We're an internet marketing agency for plumbing and HVAC contractors. Um, and we've grown uh, from, from a startup to the point where now we've got 30 full-time employees. Uh, we do about four, four and a half million dollars per year in revenue. Yeah, and, and I want to point out one of those employees is my daughter. Yeah, Sophia's <laughs> on the team. Yep. And uh, we made the Inc. 5000 list of fastest growing companies in the United States the last three years in a row, hoping for four. I'm pretty sure we'll make it. And, um, that's my, that's my core business. We serve plumbing and HVAC companies and help them generate better results online with their website, SEO, pay-per-click, social media, uh, all that fun stuff. Um, and then I also run a coaching business called Seven Figure Agency, where I coach other digital marketing agencies, local marketing agencies on how to grow and scale their digital marketing agency following our, our business model. So just from a high level overview, that's kind of what what I'm doing these days. Right, right. And what I want to point out is, is we, we kind of want to look behind the curtain, right? Because, you know, right now, you know, Fortune 500 list and all, all these great things, clearly successful a business, 35 employees, but it wasn't always so. No. So, Absolutely uh, not. So, so my, first, my first company that I started right out of high school was a company called Develicom. It was a web design and hosting company. Um, even, in, even at a really young age, I was a big student of, of like, how do I become successful? How to become rich? And I read uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And one of the books I really liked was Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert uh, Kiyosaki. And I, I listened to that a couple times. And he talked a lot about what rich people do is they build assets, right? And they invest their, passive, their, their, their money into assets to produce passive income. And what the, what the broke people do is they take what little money they have and they invest it in liabilities, cars, expensive things. And anyway, short, short and long, uh, I decided, okay, I need to be in my own business so I can build assets. And so right out of high school, I started my own web design and hosting company, uh, building websites, hosting websites. And I ran that for about three years, uh, working 40, 60 hours every single week, hustling, making cold calls, building websites, um, and I would be lucky to make four or $5,000 any given month, despite all of the effort. Um, and even worse than that, I would take all of that money and reinvest it in the costs of the business. So I had marketing tools that I invested in. I had service providers I invested in. I had groups that I invested to be part of. And so for that entire period, I literally made no money. As a matter of fact, I took on debt and I had to shut the business down. And uh, it, was a, it was a very painful counterproductive process. I could have made a lot more money if I had just gone and worked at Starbucks or McDonald's. Or yeah. Or yeah. Like so, um, so you went through the trials of entrepreneurship very early on. Yeah. So, so that was, that was my initial, you know, attempt and fail. Right. Uh, and so I, I, with my tail between my legs, I got, I got, I was young. I was getting married to my wife, Yesenia, and I needed an income in order to, to, to survive, right? We wanted to live on our own. We wanted to have our own cars. And so um, I went and I got a job. And I worked in, in business development for a couple of years. I worked for a company called Data Impact. I worked for a company called ADP. Uh, I worked for a company called oh, you, 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 were, you were selling payroll at ADP? I did, yeah. I worked there for about a year. And By the way, that's a great place to get training as a sales guy. 
Oh yeah. Great. Sale. So I think one of the most valuable skills you can have in business is the ability to sell the ability to communicate. And so the fact that I went out and got some jobs in sales really served me well. Uh, another you know, key lesson from Robert Kiyosaki's rich dad, poor dad, what's the most valuable thing you can do. Uh, and that's to learn how to sell. And so I got a job in sales, did that for a couple of years. And, um, yeah, you know, and I knew, let, let me, let me interrupt you there because that that's interesting. It's, I mean, I'm an engineer by training and I'm a darn good programmer and I can build websites. That's really my core skill. But what makes me most successful now as a business owner is my ability to sell. And my strength in the subject matter is my biggest liability. And I'm sure you've experienced that. Yeah. Because yeah, no doubt. Out, you start I, to, I'm going to just do it as opposed it's to. It's the fight. curse of knowledge. Yeah. You get too technical. You try and inform too much and you turn the prospect off as opposed to just here's the problem, here's what I think we can do to help, and move to a solution, right? That's, that's what you need to be able to do really, really well. Um, all right, so, so I basically, I, I did that work, you know, in the J-O-B world, and uh, again, I was always, re so I had a long commute. I would, I would drive about 45 minutes to an hour to most of these places that I worked, and I was always listening to audio books, online courses and things, and there was a great book called uh, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Eker. Uh, and it was just fantastic about the thought process to becoming successful and to becoming a, a true millionaire. And, you know, obviously he kind of recircled that same concept. You need to be in your own business if you're going to uh, accomplish wealth. You kind of need that. Um, but you don't have to start your own company right out of the gates, right? Figure out what kind of company you want to run, figure out where your passion lies, and then go get a job in, in a company that's doing that really well and excelling at that. And so I was like, man, I really want to figure out this whole internet marketing thing. I'd love to run my own digital marketing agency. So why don't I look for some companies that are doing well in that space? Uh, and I found this company called Reach Local. Uh, at the time, they were doing about $250 million per year in revenue. And I was like, wow, that's like, that's a cool company. Why don't I go work there? And uh, I did what it took. And I did some crazy shenanigans to get my foot in the door and to get a job in sales at that company. So, so uh, took your, a little your bit strategy of was learn off of someone who's doing it well. Yes. Yeah. I mean, and, and you know what, if it was a great career track, I could have stayed there long term. Yeah. Yeah. But if nothing else, I can go in, I can see maybe, you know, what's the right model. How are they making this work? Um, maybe find a niche for myself. And that was kind of my thought process going in, but yeah, it was yeah. really to serve the company, do a great job, you know, be as good as I could be. Um, and so I, I worked there for about a year and a half. Um, I took a haircut in terms of my compensation because I was making pretty good money at ADP, went backwards for a little bit to go work at Reach Local and um, did well. I sold well and I learned a lot, right? I learned that my business model was broken. What I was selling was wrong. How I was pricing it was wrong. And armed with that knowledge, you know, I was able to say, okay, let's go back and try this again and let's give it a different approach. Uh, and that's how I restarted my business and, uh, you know, obviously have, have kind of had a lot of success on that second attempt. Cool. Cool. And then it was your initial work promoting yourself, you know, cold calling, banging on doors, or was it SEO or online marketing based? So when I worked at, at Reach Local, the literally it was, okay, you're going to go sell local businesses, internet marketing services on a monthly retainer. Here's the phone book. Here's a list, you know, that you can go. Go call, call them, sit in BNI meetings, and chase prospects down. And that's, I learned how to do that well enough to land enough clients to, to get a nice little book of business. Um, and so when I started my own agency, that was part of it. And then there was also part of uh, how do I figure out how to get the kind of clients that I want to come to me pre positioned to buy using the internet and other tools and resources. Right, right. And it's interesting how you mentioned that because the, you, the model you, you know, the way you describe it is you were, you were using a, a push model. And so you, you were going at those people, telling them about what you do in hopes that they would say, Oh, hold on, tell me more about that. And now you're, I mean, it's not a bad thing. You're pushing your business into theirs as opposed to, uh, I mean, in the traditional world, it would be, you know, I put up a billboard that says, Hey, if, if your plumber, if you need a plumber and you got a, a you know, a stuck up drain, call us and then they call you. Now that's, you know, offline. But in the online world, moving to that pull model is, is so much better because now you're picking up the phone. They're already interested and they're almost more than anything qualifying you. Are you any good? Right. 
and so so how how did that transition go because i mean from what i know from your business you guys aren't pushing much business at all right yeah no it's all pretty much inbound at this point um so what we started to do was was to get really specific with the kind of company that we wanted to work with so initially the company was called click incorporated and it was a local internet marketing agency serving anybody we could get in south florida you know whether it was a roofer a dentist a chiropractor or anything in between if they wanted to invest in SEO and paper click and web stuff, we were going to try and serve them. And the only way to get people when you're broad like that is to push, right? You got to co call them, you got to meet them at a BNI meeting, and you got to chase them down. Um, when you're specific, and so when we decided we're going to do plumbing and HVAC and we're going to focus on that space, well, now we could put together content, we could put together positioning, we could join specific groups of those types of people and develop expertise where we could say, look, this is a plumber that we got this result. This is another plumber we got this result, and we can do the same for you. And so as opposed to being a generalist, we became the expert, the specialist, and we're able to get in front of our ideal prospects and get them to raise their hand and say, wow, I want to work with you because you've got experience and proven results in my type of business. Well, and, and I, I bet you you also are getting a lot of business because one plumber has success and then he's got a buddy in the next county over or across the country, a brother, sister, and they're kind of going, hey, you got, you got to call this guy Josh. He's the plumber guy. Yep. You start to get some word of mouth, no doubt. So, um, so it, you know, it's interesting. So it's a transition. Um, I, you know, I've actually blogged about this a lot. My grandfather passed away last year at 98, if you can believe that. Wow. Um, he, he would always tell me, don't ever experiment with your own business until you've done it. And, uh, you know, you were almost kind of like um, excusing yourself, thinking maybe I did something wrong. Well, not at all. You're doing a really good job for someone else, but it's a way to learn. And again, it could have been that you spent 20 years working at that company, but instead it's like, okay, I learned what I needed. I delivered on my requirements with them. And now I'm going to start my business with all this knowledge that I got from doing that work, right? Yeah. And ultimately I got paid... I got paid to learn, right? And that's a great way to do it. You yeah, get yeah. paid, so I'm spending money. You learn kind of how it works, what it works. Your mindset might change. You might find a niche for yourself. And um, that, was what, that was what happened for me. And go figure. You're working with plumbers, HVAC, and I guess you guys are working with electricians as well? Well, yeah, mostly plumbing and HVAC. We've got a couple of electricians. Cool. Okay, well, hey, uh, thank you. You know, the, our, our audience is small business owners, and it's good to see how someone – who is successful now started off because it didn't, you know, you didn't just birth this company and, and hired 35 employees from one day to the next. Yeah. Cool. So we're going to have a second interview uh, that follows this because we want to get into Josh's seven figure uh, agency business, uh, which is one that has a membership site piece to it. Very cool. So uh, thank you very much, Josh. And uh, you know, we'll continue in a moment with this. Absolutely. It's my pleasure.